Hello everybody, today we're going to do a problem where you were asked to calculate how much of an acid is needed to neutralize a particular base. I've given information in a way that we have to manipulate some numbers just a little bit. We also have to keep track of moles versus molarity and also grams versus moles. First things first, you really need to understand what we are talking about when we say a neutralization reaction. The short of it is that basically I am saying that I have some OH- minus hanging around, which is a base, and I need that to ultimately add to some H+, plus, which would be an acid, or you can think of it as H3O+, plus, either way. And that's going to react, and that's going to make an HOH, which of course we better know as H2O. So any neutralization reaction is effectively doing that for us. We can write this out in a more full way, which I think is probably worthwhile to do. If I wanted to write out everything, I would say that HCl, that happens to be my acid, plus barium hydroxide is going to react to form, I'm going to stick with writing this as HOH for my H2O, my H2O, because I think it can be helpful to kind of see what's going on and then barium chloride, and I would need two chlorides there for that empirical formula. Barium is a two plus cation. If you look carefully at this, you'll notice that a neutralization reaction is simply just a double replacement reaction, where I have this anion is now gonna get paired up with the H plus cation that's sitting over here instead of the barium that it used to be connected to. And also, if you look, you'll notice I need to balance this equation. I have two waters that need to happen, and I have two HCLs. That stoichiometry is going to be crucial, because you will notice that I need two acids for every one of the base to neutralize. You'll see where that comes up. Okay, let's get down to the details of the problem here. So it says, what volume of HCL with a particular molarity is needed to completely neutralize a 12.34 gram sample of barium hydroxide that was added to 800 milliliters of water. I gave us enough information here to figure out the molarity of the barium hydroxide solution if we wanted to, but it's not actually something we need to know. What's going to be important is a moles to moles argument. How many moles of acid do we have or need compared to how many moles of base? So it would be backtracking to figure out the molarity of the barium hydroxide. What I need to do is I need to just start with this mass of the barium hydroxide and I need to figure out how many moles am I talking about. You can see I gave the molar mass up here just so we didn't have to calculate it in the video. Just going to do my unit conversion with the molar mass. That many grams for one mole of the stuff. Grams are canceled. That's going to be this many moles of barium hydroxide. And that, because of this two, two hydroxides are released for every one barium hydroxide. I'm going to multiply that number of moles by two, and I will discover that I have this many moles of the hydroxide anion. This is actually my preferred way to do a neutralization problem, where I'm just going to go in and I'm going to focus on how much OH am I talking about, how much H plus am I talking about. And those things have to be equal. This times 2, you could get at through a different method. You could treat it just like a stoichiometry problem, where I have the 2 up here and I have the 1 there. And in this case, if I do that, I'm talking about, okay, I have this many grams of that species. How many moles of this species do I need? And so this is where I had wanted to. I could just continue on, and I could say 1 mole of the barium hydroxide compound is worth two moles of the HCl. So I didn't write it originally, but this is still the barium compound here that we're talking about. So I have mole of barium canceling there. And so now I could have the 12.34 divided by this quantity multiplied by that two, and that's gonna deliver the same number that we already have written there. So those are two different methods to do the same thing. Now if I kind of go back to this original technique, 
as long as we can agree that that's how many mole of OH I have, this is also the number of moles of the H plus that I need. Now I'm going to get one H plus for every HCl. So now I'm going to come over and use my equation that molarity is equal to N, the number of moles divided by the volume, where this volume needs to be in liters. And I'm going to take my given number about the concentration of my HCl solution, which was 0 0.250 molar is equal to the number of moles that I need, 0 0.144 mole divided by the volume. Multiply that V over and divide by the molarity and I will find that the volume is 0 0.576 liters and that is my final answer. So that was a neutralization problem. Those are typically fairly straightforward. You just have to watch out for any stoichiometry that's getting involved. But the key idea is always down here that the number of moles of the OH has got to be equal to the number of moles of the H plus. So that we can neutralize our H plus and our OH minus and that creates liquid water right there. This guy over here, this would still be aqueous. But really these are just spectator ions in the entire process. Hopefully that made sense to you and if you think it did, you should let your computer know.